Hello everyone, welcome to The Stanley Parable. Originally released as a mod, what I'm playing here is the new standalone version. The Stanley Parable is a bit hard to describe, but here's my attempt. It's a very meta game. It breaks the fourth wall a lot and plays with the ideas of how games are constructed. It's a game about games. Okay, if that didn't make any sense, don't worry, it will once we get in-game. Alright, The Stanley Parable is available on Steam, link to that will be in the description as always, and a demo is also available. I think that's about it, only two quick things I want to mention before I get in-game. Number one is you can see the meta-ness of the game already, just in the menu, look at this. My screen, it, it, it's a, like the screen within a 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 screen. Yeah, so it's already starting with the meta-ness. Another thing to mention is that there's something really cool about the menu. Listen listen to the sounds as I go through the menu. Do you hear that? It's got like a computer keyboard typing noises every time you go throughout the menu. I don't know if anyone else loves that, but I freaking love that so much. It's so satisfying to hear the click and clack of keys as you go through a menu. I love it. It's amazing. It just feels so satisfying to click everything. Okay, I think that's about it. Let's go. This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor on his desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day of every month of every year. And although others might have considered it soul-rending, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. And then one day, something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour, when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Never in all his years at the company had this happened, this complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Here we have the meta-ness showing itself again. Or is that even the right word in this case? I don't know. But now it's kind of playing with the idea of what happens when a game, or, you know, they're using the example of Stanley in real life, but it's talking about games, I think. What happens when a game stops telling you what to do? You know, before the, the game was telling Stanley what to do, do this, press this button right here, and he was happy and content. But when it stops, what do you do? But then, ironically enough, the narrator is telling you what to do. The narrator just said, Stanley steps out of his office. But, do I have to? Do I have to do what the narrator just said? Nope. Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed, then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. 
He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. <laughs> and then you start again. Now, do the orders of what to do never come? Or is this the game suggesting, telling me what to do, basically, by restarting me and telling me I should go outside? I don't know. This game is very clever, and it's really hard to crack. Like, I feel like I'm never able to... And when I'm talking about this game, by the way, I'm talking about the original that I played, because I'm sure this is going to be the same sort of general feel as that. I was never able to, like, crack the shell of the Stanley Parable. I never could quite figure it out. Like, I never knew exactly what it was about. It was always full of contradictions and just strangeness. So, anyway. I'm sure it's all not going to stay in this room anymore, so let's go. Oh, some of my, some of my fellow co-workers. But none of them are here. I can't wait to tell this story to my co-workers, Stanley thought. How amusing they'll find it. Oh, won't we all just laugh and laugh at the time I thought everyone had gone missing? Except they're not here. It looks like this place has been abandoned. In a rush, there's, like, papers just strewn everywhere as if people just dumped them on the ground and ran. No matter how hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. You can actually turn off the computer. Wow, I can't turn it back on though. No! Stanley went around touching every <laughs> little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference, nor did it advance the story in any way. <laughs> See? The game knows exactly what you're doing. You know, one, one really strange thing about this game so far is that the movement speed is insanely high. It's like I'm constantly sprinting. Look at this. Ooh, cops. Another strange thing is that every time you click, it seems to make a keyboard typing noise. Listen, see if you can hear it. Very strange. But yeah, it's like I'm sprinting everywhere. And there is no walk key, by the way, I checked. There's only one movement speed, this. I suppose you could crouch and move, but that's kind of insane to go through the world crouched, so no. Employee database. Ooh. Aww. I didn't want to turn it off. I wanted to look at it closer. Okay, where is the outside world? Why is it just pure white? Maybe there isn't one. More emptiness. Let's turn off these computers. Gotta save power, right? Gotta be power conscious. Awaiting input. Oh, that did not turn it off. Input received. But what now? What now? It wanted input, and it got input, but... <laughs> oh, that's gonna bug me for the rest of the game. I'm gonna stay here for 50 minutes, if that's what it takes. What happens next? It received the input, and then... This is now a staring contest. Who is going to blink first, the computer or me? I'm not blinking. 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 I stare at you closer. I'm not blinking. Okay, my eyes are getting dry. My eyes are getting really dry. Okay, I'm not blinking. Still not blinking. Ah, you win. Okay, if everyone's gone, why is everything locked? Like, if they just ran out, why would they lock everything? It's weird. It's like that room is under construction. 
The ceiling panels are missing and there's a ladder. And someone spilled their coffee! Or maybe some other type of beverage. After all, I don't actually know if it was a coffee. Maybe it was something else. That's another mystery. What happens to the computer after it receives the input? And what was inside of that cup? Hmm. It's a strange room back there. Looks kind of industrial. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. <laughs> Indeed, he entered the door on the left. Again, the game is telling me what to do. And this is where you get to play. He entered the door on his left, did he, narrator? Are you sure about that? Because it looks to me like he entered the door on the right. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. So there you go. Now this is a, a game that told you to do something, but the player is doing something differently, so now it's attempting. It's attempting to twist the story to fit what the player has now done. It's contorting itself, and so far, it can do that comfortably. Not too hard to contort to this one little change. Not a big deal. That is a massive and empty room. I'm offended by this waste of space. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. Stanley simply stood here, drinking it all in. Yes, I did. The narrator almost seems bored. As if, like, this is not the story I wanted to tell, but okay, yes. fine. Yes, really, really <laughs> worth it being here in the room. A room so utterly captivating that even though all your co-workers have mysteriously vanished, here you sit looking at these chairs and some paintings. Really worth it. It is, thank you for recognizing that, sarcastic narrator. At this point, Stanley's obsession with this room bordered on creepy and reflected poorly on his overall personality. It's possible that this is why everyone left. And there it is, being conscious of how this would look in the real world. I'm, this is something you often do in games, right? You're looking, just staring at the environment. Stanley sat around waiting for more dialogue. <laughs> but when a long time had passed and there was no more, he decided that the game was trying to send him a message. And that's exactly what happens in games, right? Like you spend time just staring around a room, but if you did that in real life, you would be creepy and weird. People don't do that in real life. Not the way they do in games. Okay. But at last, he'd had enough of the amazing room, and took the first open door on his left to get back to business. <laughs> did I? I took the first open door on the left. Hmm. Look at that. Oh, it's almost as if you're going across like an unconstructed part of the set. To get back to the constructed part of the set. Look at this. Nope. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. And there it is, trying to contort itself even more. This is not the story the narrator wanted to tell. This is not the story the game wanted to tell. Blueprints. In a freaking massive factory. Caution, do not lie. If you are lying, right now, stop. Okay. It's pretty creepy how the doors keep getting locked behind you. like I'm being painted even more and more into a corner. Ooh, look at that. A massive factory full of boxes. 
Yay, boxes. I wonder what's in them. Warning, do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. Will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, 1,000. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, 5,000. So you get penalized $5,000 if you die. I wonder how they plan to collect. By the way, you cannot jump. So if you're thinking, maybe I can try to get over the fence, I can't. You can't jump. Alright, so this is telling me, do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. Can you guess what I'm going to do? <gasps> Look, Stanley, <laughs> I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. Oh, I've certainly gotten sure off on the wrong foot. I've tripped on the wrong foot. Oh my I god! That investing in your but in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> Do I start again? <laughs> no one tells me what to do. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. <laughs> That's the nice thing about the fast walking speed. You can get back pretty damn soon. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow, yes, this room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Nope. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you... Wait a minute, wait a minute, time. wait a minute, wait a minute, what's is there? someone you've been neglecting? What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that I want something bad to happen to you? Yes. Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. I can be certain that it was intended this way, but I'm pretty damn sure it is. The narrator is the game. Right? This is like... It, the game wants to show you exactly... It wants to show you something. It wants you to have a certain experience. And now it's getting angry when you try to do anything else. This is probably just a locked door. Yes, but that is not. I thought I was going to go over here or something, but then I started to go up and realized, hey, I think I can fall here. What's this way? Danger. <laughs> Danger. Danger everywhere. Okay, cool. Where exactly do the dangers come from? This doesn't look dangerous. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Oh, did I? Aha, perhaps you misunderstood. Stanley walked through the red door. No, no, I think you misunderstood. I was doing exactly what I intended to. I still don't think we're communicating properly. Stanley walked through the red door. Oh, you want me to go to... The blue door. All right, fine. Go ahead, Stanley. You want to know so badly what's out there? You want to find out what lies at the end of this road you've chosen? Well, don't let me stop you.
What in the you see? hell? There's nothing here. I haven't even finished building this section of the map because you were never supposed to be here in the first place. Broken rooms, exposed developer textures. Is this what you had wanted? Was it worth ruining the entire story I had written out specifically for you? Do you not think I put a lot of time into that? Because I did. And in the end, it was all for nothing. Because this is what you wanted to see. Help me here, Stanley. Help elucidate these strange and unknowable desires of yours. What would have made this game better? What did you want to see? Vehicles? Skill trees? Work with me. You've given me absolutely nothing so far. Tell you what. Let me take a stab in the dark at a new design and you can give me some feedback. There we go. A third option. This already feels leaps ahead of where we were before. Go ahead, Stanley. Take it for a spin. Hmm. Oh, it... Office space. Ceiling light 64.64. Well, I guess this place isn't quite finished yet. Let's go explore this new option. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. Now, tell me about your experience with this new version. Would you say that the game benefited from allowing you more choices? Feel free to be honest. I'm looking for some real critical feedback here. Hmm. It's pretty my experience. Okay. Does it benefit from more options? Yeah, yeah, I think it does. Overall, I'd, I'd give this 5 out of 5. It's a very positive experience. Aha! You see, I knew I was onto something. Where do these flashes of inspiration come from? How did I know the game needed a third door? Well, it's instinct mostly. A calling in your gut. I really couldn't say where the idea came from, except that I, I felt it in my soul. You can't teach that, Stanley. Don't even try. Here, based on the data from your previous playthrough, I've compiled a new version. And to be perfectly candid, I think I've knocked it out of the park with this one. Let's take a look. The Stanley Parable Worldwide Leaderboard. Ooh. I wonder if these are actually real. Do you think so? It could be. Did you know that 21.3% of players skipped the intro sequence? Only the worst 3% of players chose the blue door. <laughs> Night. Oh, it's gone. No. This is you. Stanley427 is online. You are objectively ranked 900 and 900, 328th out of 900, 328 players worldwide. Why not ask players for help? Error, friend list, empty. Fuck you. Now the game's insulting me. All right, you want to insult me? Huh? Huh? I'm going through this door again. Compete against other players, against others to improve your Stanley Parable career. Now, would you say that competitive leaderboard helped you feel motivated to keep walking through doors? Again, honest answers, please. Nope, I don't care about your stupid insulting leaderboard that tells me I have no friends. Fuck you. Hey, I nearly forgot. I've got a prototype of a new game I've been working on, and now would be a lovely opportunity to give it some playtesting. You wouldn't mind taking a look at it, would you? Perfect. Let me boot it up. Okay, cool. Let's see what you've got. In this game, the baby crawls left towards danger. You click the button to move him back to the right, and if he reaches the fire, you fail. It's a very meaningful game. <laughs> All about the desperation and tedium of endlessly confronting the demands of family life. I think the art world will really take notice. But of course, the message of the game only becomes clear once you've been playing it for about four hours. So why don't you give it four hours of play to make sure it's effective? <laughs> Be sure to keep notes on your experience. Oh, I will. Okay. There we go. Oh my god, that is the most obnoxious combination of noises ever. Okay, folks, I'm going to be here for four hours. Hold on, let me take some notes. Just taking down some notes here. Hmm, yes. I'm getting some interesting data here. I think I can offer some good feedback.
Okay, I'm starting to feel like it's becoming a little bit more fun. I, I can see how this, this game might improve after a couple hours of play. You just gotta get through the beginning, because it's, you know, kind of lags in the beginning. But some things just get off to a slow start. You know, I don't quite understand it, but maybe I will after two more hours, maybe? Okay, I'm starting to think maybe this game is just not good. Hmm. No, no, I just need to stick with it. Just need to stick with it. M maybe five more hours will do. Okay, I can't take it anymore. Just die, just die. You heartless bastard. Did you do it because you hate babies or purely to spite me? Because if it's the latter, well, I don't know what to do. I'm completely out of ideas. I can't think of a single thing that might improve the experience for me. I'm not even going to try. I'm out. I'm out. I'm done. It's over. Thank you for playing. Your input was extremely valuable. Oh, hey, since my game was so awful, why don't we play someone else's game? Just to ease the pain. Let's see. What do we have here? <coughs> yes. This seems like it'll work. Let's give it a shot. Excellent. Show me another game. Well, Stanley, Seriously? is any better? At y last, the one thing you've always desired. A game I had absolutely nothing to do with. But is it enough? Tell me that, Stanley. Will it ever be enough? Well, I'll say this. I'm done making things for you. From now on, I will only create to fulfill a greater artistic purpose. Watch this, Stanley. I'm going to build a house. Where, where are you building it? This will go here. No, here. And then... Let's see, what does it need? I, uh, yes, of course. And just to finish it all off, yes. <laughs> It's complete. <laughs> I made this, Stanley. Look at it. Gaze upon my work of art and feel ashamed at your own inadequacy. Ah, but you've only seen it from the outside. You've only gotten half the experience. Please, step inside and make yourself comfortable. I don't want to step inside of your shitty little Minecraft home. I'm gonna leave, but I can't because I can't jump. I'm in Minecraft, but I can't jump. Achievement unlocked. You can't jump. Exactly! Thank you, game! I can't fucking jump! What is Minecraft without the ability to jump? Like a bunny rabbit, constantly. <laughs> Let me out! Fine. Well, look at your stupid little dirt home. It doesn't even have a torch. It's going to be dark. It's going to be pitch black at nighttime. Do I have to crouch? Isn't there it we go. Grand. Isn't it perfect? It could only be better if... Wait, that's it. We must rebuild it out of diamond. Oh, yeah. Diamond everything. Yes, yes, yes. Come along, Stanley. We have to go mining. Oh, okay, let's go mining. Sweet. Oh, what is that? Hold on. I can go down there, but I'm wondering if I can go somewhere else. Damn, I can't. Ah, <laughs> oh, I can't jump! Okay. Down oh my, it looks like it's going to get a bit dark. Have you brought a light? Hmm, no. Did you? Actually, this is not really particularly dark. This might be what Minecraft looks like if you turn the brightness all the way up. Oh, mushrooms. Oh, no, 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 no. This is far more open-ended than I had in mind. I'm looking for something more narrow and linear. Something that makes you feel utterly irrelevant. This won't do at all. One out of five. Even the diamonds no. don't save No, 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 no. Don't stop, okay, don't stop. new game. Oh. I think I heard a zombie behind me. Okay. What game is it going to show me next?
This is Portal. <laughs> yes, I don't even know what this game is, but I love it. You, trapped in a glass box with no way out, listening to me talk. Oh, it's inspired. I couldn't have done it any better myself. What is this game even supposed to be? I can't figure it out. Okay, now I'm curious. Let's go find out what the hell this is. No, I didn't mean to break that. Hold on. Oh, I can't get back because I can't jump. Ugh. Yeah, that's what I think you're... Ooh. The sound design on this clipboard is extraordinary. Listen to that. Seriously, that sounds so good! Oh my god, that is the best sounding clipboard effects. Hitting stuff I've ever heard. Listen to that. Oh my god, I'm gonna play with this for the next hour. I am seriously going to do this for like five minutes. Okay, well the rest of this episode, everyone, will be uh, me playing with this clipboard. That sounds so good! Ah. This is the best game ever. I don't remember this clipboard sounding this good in the original Portal, but then again, I don't know if I ever messed with this in the original Portal. I don't even know if it existed in the original Portal. Yes, 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 more sounds. Oh, that is beautiful. Ugh. Looks like there's freaking lava down there. Seriously, how does that sound so good? What black magic has been done to this clipboard? I'm taking- uh, this is gonna be my companion cube, this clipboard. It's coming with me for the rest of the game. Oh, it's a puzzle. Critical thinking, Stanley. Your forte. Nah, I don't need the cube, I'll use my clipboard. Okay, it's not heavy enough. What the hell? Why did you bounce? Don't bounce. I didn't give you permission to bounce. Fall. Yes. Genius. Yes. Ooh, thank you. You're coming with me, clipboard. No, actually, you know what? I think that's plenty. No, no, no. I really no. don't care much to see you stumble through any more of these... Didn't expect that, did you? Work in progress. Work in progress. Beta. The Stanley Parable Alpha Test. And this clipboard is coming with me. Yes, you are. I love you, clipboard. Okay, I'm gonna put you right here in the middle of the room so I won't forget you. Actually, no, I'm actually gonna take you with me. Oh, it looks like someone's working on putting up that ceiling light office space block. That is 64 by 64 units big? I don't know. I think that's a drop into the abyss. I can't tell. I'm not going to experiment with that just yet. I can't really see anything. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it just drops to the abyss everywhere. Hmm. Okay. Well, I guess I know where I'm going. Unless I can jump to something? No, wait, I can't jump. What the hell am I thinking? Okay, here we go. No! My clipboard! No, I lost my clipboard! Oh, <sighs> never forget. Best sounding clipboard NA 2013-2013. Jeez, install some lights in here. Come on. Let's 
place is hideous. Ooh, light. Light at the end of the tunnel. Ooh. Looks like a bunch of monitors. Yeah, of course, the doors are locked. I wonder if there's a single door in the entire game that is closed, but unlocked. So far, none of them have been. That's my office. What is that? Is that a mirror, or is that another office? Is it going to close behind me? No. Hmm. It's like a guard station. Monitoring station. I can't do anything with this stuff. Ugh. Well, crap. Whoa. I wonder what he found. If what he wanted was to be the leading man in his own story, well, perhaps he's gotten it. Down in wherever he is right now. I wonder if he's happy with his choice, and if he's learned the heavy cost that comes with it. He'll understand soon what I was trying to tell him. He needs me. Someone who will wrap everything up at the end to make sense out of the chaos and the fear and the confusion. That's who I am. That is what I mean to this world. Oh, yes. Yes, I'll be back. There's no other way. Once this ends, after it all comes to a close, then I'll be back. The end will be here soon. Very soon. I can wait. <laughs> Okay. I'm waiting. <laughs> Alright, what happens now? Back to the beginning? Okay. Hmm. What should I do? Go with what he says? Let's go with what he says. Let's play All along with the story. Were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Wow. He's actually correct this time. He did. Stanley did enter. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Do not alter without consulting whiteboard manager. There's a whiteboard manager. Meeting room. What? I, I don't even know what this means. Meeting schedule. This is insane. Financial panic meeting. Boss's inspection. Eight bird, whatever that means. This something is too small. <laughs> oh, this box is too small. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> Office party on Friday at 4 p.m.? Yeah, I think so. Yes, yes, fascinating. Tomorrow, complete today. <laughs> On the agenda for tomorrow is to complete today's unfinished agenda items. <laughs> what? <laughs> and write next day's agenda, and then reflect. Wait, what? Employees 4... 417... 491, 431, 405, 416, and Jim. Who is Jim, and why does he not have a number for a name? Please keep the targets on the topic of... And it's been wiped off or blurred. What the hell? Targets. 
Push for funding of R&D of new coffee machine. Research and development on a new coffee machine. Cool. What's does it say? Sten... Something, something... I don't know what the hell that says. Um, another target is get Chris out of the broom closet. Okay, that might be a good idea. Hire someone to synergize papers. <laughs> Talk about buzzwords, huh? Synergize papers. Papers are too synergized. Fire paper guy. Hire somebody to fire the paper synergizing guy. Who moved my desk? <laughs> the future was the future was yesterday. Tomorrow is now. Okay, sure. And there's more. Buy quarterly post review review. We need less reviews. 402 and 405 want to get rid of the death sport portion in the primary review schedule. Hmm. But I think that's a stupid idea. More water coolers. More water cooler heaters. <laughs> Charts need to be more hip to appeal to teenage demographic. What? I, what? I don't even know what that... What? Why would the chart need to be hip? The charts describe the demographics. They're not given to the demographics. Find teenagers to put in teenage demographic. <laughs> Some sort of child... Does that say trap? Oh, what the hell that says? Work harder, hard worker. Hmm. A lot of percent. Space between the teenagers. Teenagers. Size of demographic. Okay, they need more teenagers. That's what I'm getting from this. Throw something in the ideas bin. No more bins. Trash cans. <laughs> oh, and there's more. What is hot? Profits, 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 profits. And then profits, but the other profits. P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S. Different kind of profit. And then profits and profits. And there's a telephone directory. What do people want? Things. Money. More money. Things. But with money to buy more things? Graphs. Graphs about things plus money. We have our new product. Ooh, they're going to make graphs about things and money. Clever, 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 clever. Stripes. Requires more secondary research. Hmm. Colored in segment. This is an interesting pie chart. The stock market the stock market is somewhere here. <laughs> Tips for not getting fired. Talk less. Do unbelievably amazing work all the time every day with no expectation of promotion or recognition. And don't get fired. How to solve a dispute with a coworker. Let it ball up inside of you. Take it out passive aggressively on other coworkers. Recent co uh resent wait, resent coworkers for what? Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slide has a slick blue graphic in the header and throw some bevel on all the text. This will ensure a calm and productive work environment. Yes, it will. Everyone is unique. You most of all. <laughs> Number of slides on this slide. That many charts, that many charts and slides and that many slides. That doesn't even make any sense. Rate at which charts on the same slide depict the same information. Hmm. Information. Graphs and ratios. Fascinating. Rate of increase in graphs per slide. Ooh, there's a Venn di Okay. Please no more charts. Please, I'm bang. Stop, stop. The Boss Appreciation Minute. On your Boss Appreciation Minute worksheet, circle the top 20 things you love most about your boss. Fill out in triplicate and return to your Boss Appreciation Specialist. Solving interpersonal conflict. If you ever find yourself in conflict with another diligent employee like yourself, but more inclined towards conflict unless you're the kind of person who initiates conflict, why did we hire you? What the fuck? Remember... Okay. <laughs> what are your dreams for the future? Talk radio. Mitosis. What? A boat? Pollution? Less air? Spring break? Metamorphosis? Travel? Comatose? Lunch? Transcend? What? And we're back to tips for not getting fired. Okay, goodbye. Wait a minute, there's another one. To do. Synergize core value expenditures. Ooh. Sounds hot. Sounds sexy. Yeah, you synergize that stuff. Mm. Shift global market per... What does the rest of that say? It's covered up. Shift global market parad... Parad? Parad? Par... I don't know. Monetize free to play. <laughs> uh. Help. 
That makes it harder to see. Let me stand up. Help! I'm a post-it. Well, I'm afraid I can't change who you are, little post-it. You will forever be a post-it. Goodbye. Oh! We're supposed to get someone out of the broom closet. Are you still in there? Are you, are you in there? Hello? Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here, so he turned around and got back on track. I turned around. Did I? Did I? Hmm. Are you sure there's nothing in here? Because there's supposed to be someone stuck in the broom here. closet. No choice to make, no path to follow, just an empty broom closet. I no don't... reason to still be here. I don't believe you, narrator. I don't trust you, narrator. It was baffling that Stanley was still just sitting in the broom closet. He wasn't even doing anything. At least if there was something to interact with, he'd be justified in some way. As it is, he's literally just standing there doing sweet F.A. <laughs> sweet F.A. Are you, are you really still in the broom closet? Standing around doing nothing? Why? Please offer me some explanation here. I'm, I'm genuinely confused. I'm doing it because you told me not to. You do realize there's no choice or anything in here, right? If I'd said Stanley walked past the broom closet, at least you would have had a reason for exploring it to find out. But it didn't even occur to me because literally this closet is of absolutely no significance to the story whatsoever. I never would have thought to mention it. No, it does have some significance. Someone, according to the whiteboard, was supposed to be trapped in here. Maybe to you this is somehow its own branching path. Maybe when you go talk about this with your friend, you'll say, Oh, did you get the broom closet ending? The broom closet ending was my favorite. I hope your friends find this concerning. <laughs> this is truly the best end. Okay, well, that's the end of the game, everyone. And uh, No, okay. Stanley was fat and ugly and really, really stupid. He probably only got the job because of a family connection. That's how stupid he is. That all with drug money. Also, Stanley is addicted to drugs and hookers. Yeah, well, you're a... You're a... You're well, a meanie. I've come to a very definite conclusion about what's going on right now. You're dead. You got to this broom closet, explored it a bit, and were just about to leave because there's nothing here when a physical melody of some sort shut down your central nervous system and you collapsed on the keyboard. Well, in a situation like this, the responsible thing is to alert someone nearby so as to ensure that your body is taken care of before it begins to decompose. Hello? Anyone who happens to be nearby? The person at this computer is dead. He or she has fallen prey to any number of your countless human physiological vulnerabilities. It's indicative of the long-term sustainability of your species. Please remove their corpse from the area and instruct another human to take their place at the computer, making sure they understand basic first-person video game mechanics and filling them in on the history of narrative tropes in video gaming so that the irony and insightful commentary of this game is not lost on them. <laughs> All right, when you've done that, just step out into the hallway. No. No. I'm not going to leave. I'm going to stay here for the rest of the game. What are you going to do about it? Hmm? Hmm? This is a challenge. A silent protest. Well, actually, it's not silent because I'm talking. Hmm. Need to think about that one. Hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> Ooh, this light is really hot. Is it bright in here, or is it just me? Oh, I'm starting to sweat. <sighs> okay, okay, I'll leave. Ah, second player. It's good to have you on board. I guarantee you can't... Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Did I? Did I walk upstairs? Hmm. I guess I did not.
But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss, admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished? His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So he imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Whoa. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, 
For just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. The end? No. No, this is different. This is different. Isn't it? It didn't look like this when I came out last time. No, this is different. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. 